really loud if you will. Cool. How would you draw your energy flow diagram, people? What would your energy flow diagram look like? Dude, you can tell me. I'll do it up here, brother. In, in the beginning, tell me about the object's motion. So th this is an object, a, a car, right? So you're saying the object's at rest at the first moment in time. In other words, the speed is zero. All right, that's good. And then in the end, what would this look like? Are you folks all good with that? So it's going some speed V. Everybody cool? And I suppose your system would then be what? Okay. Does the car change height? So is there any reason to include a gravity field here? Okay. Um, so this would be a really good first step. Now, elastic, is there any elastic to worry about? Any EG to worry about? Because there's no change in height. We don't care about it. Any kinetic in the beginning? So would you guys agree that in the beginning we got no energy stored in this system? So nothing, but in the end, are we going to have EK if we're then moving? Because, so it has to be because of work. You're right. Good. So somehow between these moments in time, something must be pushing on our system. Any ideas what it might be? Good. Now this is a little weird to think about. You're probably not used to thinking this way. But when you're in a car, forget about the engine because that's part of your car. And forget about the tires. But would you agree that the tires push back against the surface of the road? Thus, by third law, we can say the road pushes back on the tires. And that's actually what we're talking about. It's the road. The road is doing work on the car. Road does work on car. That's how we would say it, I guess. And how would we calculate that? There's a force due to the road, and there's a distance. Let's make this zero right here. And the car supposedly moved some distance from there to there. And we'll just call that delta x. Are you guys good? So what's your equation from your flow diagram? Everybody. So work has to equal our ek. Now, do we know anything about the force due to the road on the car in this problem? Is there anything given there? So we don't know anything about work. We can't calculate it. Do we know anything about the speed of the car in the end? What is it? So we have a speed, do we have a mass? What's the mass of the car? Everybody. What is it? 5,000. Okay. So we actually have everything we need to calculate EK, right? What do I do here? What's, what's EK going to be? I take one half. Okay. So I'll do 5,000 kilograms times 20. Everybody good there? Everybody cool? Please check. It's much better if you get it wrong now than if you get it wrong on Thursday. So please give it a try. Is that, is that right? Everybody? So I'm forgetting the square. So please don't forget that. That's probably one of the more common errors people make. Now I need you guys to calculate this for me, please. Go ahead. I'm waiting for everybody to calculate. It's way better if you do this now, even if you mess it up. Yeah? Go. 
Speak loud, please. <laughs> Say it again, really loud. So why don't I have an arrow going out? You bring up a really important point. I wasn't clear about my assumptions. What am I assuming? Because I don't have an arrow going out, what am I saying? What am I ignoring? Can I say I'm ignoring EDIS? So I'm really glad you said that. Let, let's ignore, because I need to write my assumptions down. Ignore dissipated energy. Good. And does there always need to be an, an arrow out when there's an arrow in? So it doesn't have to be that way, don't worry. But you do need to write down the assumptions you're making. It'll help you. So you guys haven't told me what this value is yet. Please help. Please check, everybody. It's just 2,500 times 20 times 20. Huh? How many people got a million here? I need everybody's help, dude. How many people are getting a million? All right, and it's a good time to check your work and make sure you can do it. So what does this mean? Yeah, and does this work end up to be kinetic energy? So the real reason you're drawing energy flow diagrams is to get an equation and then every term in your equation you'll have other equations for. Does that make sense? So it helps you understand the big picture. Make sense? Um, what's, that was A, what's B asking? <laughs> okay. Yeah, how could you do this? Okay, well, hold on, hold on. I'm not that fast. Okay, so so the equation you're using is the equation for EK, right? One half mv squared. And what do you plug in for EK? A million? I'm not going to actually solve it. I'm going to leave it for you guys to do. Uh, what are you plugging in for F? Why 3,000 and not 5,000? Okay. Good. And you solve for V, right? So just so you can check your work, what do you get for V? Someone please do that now. And when three people agree on it, We'll write that down so you folks can do this at home and check. This will be a video you can watch on the website and you can try it. Make sense and check that you can do it. Your, your celebration is Thursday, so you should you should really be getting ready. Okay, so I'm going to just call it 26 meters a second. Okay. All right, now I need C. What's C asking for? Uh, Okay, so what, read that again when everyone's listening. One more time. What did you say? So can I still use this equation? Okay, so I'm just going to copy that down. Because um, I have a feeling it's going to help. So work is going to be equal to my kinetic energy in the end. And the question is asking about force. Force isn't even in it in this equation. In EK, we have nothing related to force. But work, by definition, is what? Let's try that again. It's, it's the area under which graph? Well, keep trying. So work, if you'll recall, yeah, yeah, we're talking about this kind of a graph, right? And we're saying, and what's cool about this, this can be the force to make the car speed up, or it can be the force to make the car slow down. 
What do you think it is that makes that pushes on the car for the car to speed up? So is the road pushing? And then what do you think it is that pushes on the car to make it stop? So we can ask you questions about stopping the car. We and it's the same. Look, go up to your energy flow diagram. If you think in this energy flow diagram, can I make my end, my beginning, and my beginning my end, and do I get the same equation? So if you think in an energy flow diagram, you can start to use it for everything. Make sense? So I can be moving and then I can stop and this arrow instead of going in is going pull. And that, then I'm talking about stopping a car. It's pretty cool that way. And I think that's what, what's C asking again, please? Help me again. What is C asking? So how much force do we need to stop this car? Isn't F delta X going to equal the work? So say that again, please. Okay, so we put a million there. Right? What do we put for a delta X? 20. And we can find the force to stop the car. And I think it comes out to be about 50,000 newtons, so you can check your work. Is everybody good there? Everybody cool? So I'm, I'm leaving it for you to do so that you can practice. All right? Um, what's D all about, please? Go ahead. There's one more part to this, right? Same force were applied from the wire truck moving at speeds of 20 meters per second. How far would it take to stop? So is the same energy flow diagram correct? So can we say that work is still going to equal R E K? Yeah. Okay. And you'll have to read the question again because it takes me time to figure it out. If the same force were applied from the wire truck moving at speeds of 20 meters per second, how much how far would it take to stop? So which one of these variables are we actually looking for now? Maybe read it one more time. It usually takes like three or four times reading it over and over before you realize what you're looking for. If you're anything like me. Uh, if the same force were applied to the wider truck moving at the speed of 20 meters per second, how far would it take to stop? You guys see what we're looking for? What are we looking for here? Okay, so we're trying to solve for delta x. And you're actually going to do it twice with two different speeds, right? So you're going to use, I'll, I'll, I'll do this over here, you know, and over here. For one of them, you got a speed of, what, 20? Is that right? And then your mass, it, we're talking about the lighter cars. So what's the mass, please? It will help. Okay. What? Okay. 3,000, good. And that's the same for both. And uh, what's the force that we're talking about here? For, okay, so 50,000 newtons is the road pushing on the car to slow it down. You guys good? And um, we're solving for delta x. And then you'll do the same thing over here. You'll do this twice. What are you using? Different what? No, read, read the question, the last two parts of this question. Different speeds, yeah. So what do you think is going to happen when you solve this? Move this over here. This one, the speed's actually 26, right? So I turn that into a 6. What do you folks think is going to be bigger? Which one? I need your help. Which one's going to be bigger? You're moving a little slower here than here. And it, what I really want you to solve this on your own and see what happens because the difference... Give me a moment, please. The difference is dramatic. You're only changing speed by a little, but your stopping distance is going to almost double. I think it's useful to have a sense of that because you all get in chunks of metal and move around in them, and when they hit each other, it's not good. Right? Hey, what's your homework? Are you all going to do the rest of the problem? 
Are you going to do floor diagrams? Thank you. Have a good day.